All right, we have beautiful weather here on an early Sunday afternoon. It's not quite noon yet in November. We're in the first week at the end of the first week of November and um, just did daylight savings time fall back. That is not the topic of this video, but why are we still doing that? Anyway, we are going to build a solar array in the backyard on the ground, not on the roof. This is going to allow me to reposition the solar panels when I want to change the elevation. I've built a, or I've designed a structure of my own design, and we're going to use that, see if I need to uh, do some design iterations as we go. But uh, we're going to see how it goes. This is going to be an 800 watt solar array. It's going to allow me to set up an emergency home backup system to power things like my refrigerator probably my uh, gas furnace since it doesn't require a whole lot of electricity. We're gonna see how well this all works. I'm gonna take you along for the ride and we're gonna figure it out together. Let's do it. As I mentioned, I just kind of visualized this design myself. And these are just the basic uh, kind of details here that I'm going to try to follow. But essentially, I'm going to create a, a frame to hold the solar panels here. And I've, each one of these is gonna hold a solar panel. And the idea is that the solar panel is gonna fit basically inside this rectangle. And then this is kind of the second piece. This is the base. And I'm gonna put casters under these little four by four reinforcements in the corner, just on the front side so that I can uh, reposition the array relatively easily. And then this is going to be a hinged uh, leg stand, I guess you would call it. And this will allow me to, it's gonna have some uh, Z brackets on it, some pretty robust things. I'm gonna show you the parts here in a second that, I'm, that I intend to use. And I'm gonna have a couple of handles basically on top of the main support uh, that are going to latch into the Z bracket hooks on here. And this will probably make a lot more sense once we get into it. But it's gonna allow me, I'm gonna have three different settings, basically one for uh, winter, one for spring and, and fall, and then one for summer, which is more of a, you know, a higher elevation. I think I said that in reverse, actually. But um, I did those calculations using a website, which I'll share with you in a little bit, in terms of uh, where those need to be located. Uh, but we'll get into all of that. Let's take a look at the parts that I'm going to be using here. Obviously, I need some solar panels. These are the Bujar V 200-watt uh, solar panels. This is the 9 bus bar uh, product. So you can see these little lines here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, it's a lot more efficient for shading purposes than say a five bus bar design. So let's take a look at some of the parts I'm gonna use. These are the Z brackets I'm talking about. Pretty heavy duty. And these are gonna act as basically hooks uh, for my various uh, vertical uh, angle adjustments. Got some deck screws. Unfortunately, I'm using standard white pine studs here. These are not pressure treated. I couldn't find pressure treated in 10 foot links and I didn't wanna buy that much pressure treated wood. So I did spend the extra money on some bare premium uh, weather sealant that I'm going to paint onto these things or brush on using these foam brushes. And then I've got some hinges uh, that I'm gonna use in a couple of different spots. It's actually two different styles of hinges. Here's kind of a more of a traditional door hinge. And, and then I've got actually four casters. I'm only gonna use two of them at this point, uh, but I'm gonna locate them up in the upper front and right and left corners and they are lockable so I should be able to lock these down so they don't get blown around by the wind and the friction that the back of the frame which again if we look at the at the drawing here the friction on the back of the frame is going to basically just rest on the ground I don't have a better solution for that at the moment I might come up with something and by the way if you got suggestions and uh, see something that might be done much better differently than what I'm doing feel free to leave comments below. I would love to get your, your feedback and I might integrate those in future iterations of this design. But we'll see how it goes. It's still gonna be fairly heavy. Um, and uh, so these are the handles that are gonna be mounted actually on top of the solar panel frame and probably somewhere right around here so that they latch into uh, the hooks that are gonna be on these little guys right here. And let's see, I am gonna need to run cable into the house because I do not want to have to keep batteries and things outside if I don't have to. So I'm gonna run uh, MC4 cable through a junction box, which I also have. That's, I don't have that out here right now, but I do have a junction box for that. This is a big old masonry bit that I bought. Uh, it's gonna allow me to feed cable through the brick. And then actually back here, I've got uh, some plastic uh, dual cable bushings that are gonna keep the cables from getting uh, kind of threadbare by rubbing against the brick. 
and then I'll seal that up and we're gonna do some cool stuff on the inside of the house which will be in subsequent videos so stay tuned for that anyway let's uh, get this party started all right now before I cut any of the frame I need to make sure that I have got consistent dimensions width and height on these solar panels so I've already measured the one so I'm gonna get the other three out of the box just to make sure there's not any variability that catches me by surprise I don't want to find that out after I've already cut the wood, so I'm going to do that next. Now, I've had this uh, this Bouge RV 200 watt panel for a good six months or so. It's a really solid panel, and so I've got three more of them. I chose to stick with the same brand, and you can see they come with about a one meter length of MC4 cable. It's clearly marked plus and minus. There's a label on the back here that also gives you your all of the important specs when you're planning on connecting these together. Also in these user guides, which as I've said on many previous videos, I, I really do enjoy uh, the Bouge RV user guides. So for example, here's a page that runs down all the electrical parameters, including the uh, series fuse rate rating, which is really important to know, and the short circuit current and all that stuff. So we'll get into all that stuff in another video actually, but let's just uh, get these other panels out and then I'll measure them. All right, all the same length and height. So that's great. So I don't have to change my calculations at all. All right, I've already taken my ibuprofen <laughs> proactively because I know I'm gonna be sore, but I gotta move all these materials to the backyard. I gotta set up my uh, rip saw and I need to get my uh, power station out there to run the rip saw. And I'm sure I need some drills and all that stuff. So let me get to that. All right, welcome back to day two of the 800 watt DIY project. Basically, all we have left to do is uh, put the casters here, and I'm gonna go over the remaining parts here with you. But put the remaining, put the casters on the little blocks here, and then we're going to attach the main solar panel frame to the base using a couple of door hinges, which are down here. So let's, let's talk about those parts real quick. So we're gonna put these casters basically they're locking casters. I'm only going to use two of them at this point and uh, see if that is sufficient. But we're going to kind of just position them kind of a spanning the support block and the 2x4, kind of like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And that'll give us the ability to move these and then lock them from the front. And the back will just rest on the concrete or the grass and provide some friction that will hopefully, between the locking caster and the back, keep it from uh, sliding in the wind. So we'll see if I need to use the other two casters or if that makes sense or not, but I do have that option to install those later over here if I if I need to. So anyway, let's, uh, I am gonna use my Super Bass Pro again. I'm gonna use that to power my hammer drill because that's one of the other things over here is to put cable into the house. I'm going to use this uh, little kind of all weather uh, sealed box here. Now it does have a couple of cutouts on the bottom, which are perfect for my plus and minus MC4 connections But I'm going to drill a hole right there in the middle uh, of this and uh, that's going to allow me to hopefully fish My MC4 cable into the side of the house somewhere down there and we're going to use Tapcon screws here to uh, Secure that to the brick 
and then we'll actually protect the cable by using one of these uh, black bushings here. I might squeeze some silicone into that hole once I have the cable pulled in as well. design I didn't intend to leave this an inch high on this little 4x4 block that I'm using to help support the uh, you know give more contact area to, to mount the wheels but um, so I didn't anticipate since I'm hinging this piece here is going to be right in front of there I need to have a little bit of clearance here so this piece can hinge up otherwise I suspect I'm gonna bind uh, the the top frame right here on these little posts so I'm gonna just trim off like a quarter inch or so I'm going to use a, a, a sawzall to do that and then I'm going to have to restain those cutaway areas uh, to keep them uh, weather proof and yeah so minor detail but got to do it right Got the hinges working just fine on the bottom there so that's cool they are uh, not gonna bind up in this little corner right here like I was worried about and I got that restained so we should be good now that I've got the little notch cut out now really all I have left to do is add these handle handles here that I've got to uh, latch into these hooks and these are gonna basically go right here so that they can hopefully easily latch into all of those hooks and uh, yeah, so we're gonna see how well that works. But I'm gonna put one there and then one on that side. And that should give me the elevation that I, uh, that I need for the three seasons. And also kind of a time of day to some extent. So I can alter the elevation as I need it. And doing it on two, originally I was gonna do just one support in the middle. But then I thought that might get a little wobbly and so I wanted to do two supports and then be able to not have to fumble with them individually. I just added this cross piece here so that I could, you know, align both of them at one time. So that'll make it easier to get the, uh, the alignment done. Anyway, so let's uh, get to the list last bit here until we get the uh, Z brackets and I can actually mount the solar panels. So it's coming together. It's basically summertime. This will be spring and fall. And then this will be wintertime. So, pretty sturdy. All right, I had mentioned previously that I would explain how I came up with the elevation angles that I wanted to use for the height adjustment or the angle adjustment. And so I found this website called footprinthero.com. And you can see there's forward slash solar panel angle by zip code. I'll put that in the description because it's a bit of a mouthful. And by typing in my zip code, it gave me the optimal tilt angles for my solar panels based on season. And as you can see here, the fall and spring are basically the same at 31 degrees. So I really have only three angles that I needed to figure out. And if you look at the side of the solar panel frame, you see it's basically a triangle. And to figure out what these angles are on a triangle, I use the website called Triangle Calculator. It's actually calculator.net forward slash triangle calculator. And again, I'll put that link in the description if you want to go check it out. But here it gives you a, a page where you can just simply type in the things that you know, and you can put in the three values that you know. And in this case, I know that the side my solar panels sit on is 55 inches. The base is also 55 inches. And what I want to figure out is what is the height of this third leg of the triangle? for each of those particular uh, angles that I need. So if I type in 32 degrees and say calculate, and again, this is my spring and fall, it says that I need basically 30.32 inches uh, for this particular height adjustment. So that is the height at which I mount that particular Z bracket. And you can see I could do that very easily for the other two. So the one for wintertime comes in at 46 degrees 
And if I calculate that, I needed to put that at a height of 42.98 or 43 inches for the height adjustment here. And then I do the same thing for the, uh, the summer one as well, which is much more shallow. But that is how I figured out what specific position I wanted to put those Z brackets on to ensure that my solar panels were at the optimum angle based on the season. Now all we need are some solar panel Z brackets and I can finish this thing. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the junction box for my MC4 cable so I can bring the solar power into the house. So let's do that. All right, so I put a little dot there and the uh, box, that's where I'm gonna drill the cable access. So I want this hole to be on the upper side so when it comes out, I can loop the cable easily. I'm not really sure if that matters, but I've got four holes here. So that's where I'll drill for my Tapcons pre-drill. And then I gotta, I'm gonna have to drill these out with a smaller drill so the Tapcons don't crack this as I'm putting it in there. So I've got this little feeder wire here that I can use to sort of pull through the um, MC4 cable. Hopefully that'll be relatively easy to, to do. And I will say that this little uh, Zengier Super Bass Pro 2000 definitely handled the power drills and the uh, hammer drills just fine. And also my miter saw just fine. So definitely works for those kinds of applications as well. All right. Time to string some MC4 cable into there, see how we do. This is my MC4 cable. I've got it in, it's in separate strands, right and left, or <laughs> not right and left, positive and negative. And uh, I went ahead and put some red heat shrink on the end of the one that corresponds to my positive lead off of the solar panel. So just so I can keep it straight on the other side since these are separate cables, I don't wanna get them mixed, uh, mixed up. So, going to attach them to this and hopefully feed them both through. Just to prevent abrasion on the cable as it's going through the, uh, the brick, since this outside is gonna get moved around a little bit, I bought these little plastic bushings here that are designed for double coax. So I think that'll be fine. This is actually a 10 gauge solar cable. Uh, obviously MC4 is on one side and uh, bare wire on the other. So, um, yeah, and I, I'll put links to this stuff below if you're interested in seeing what these are and where I got them. So these are all Amazon purchases. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all, feed the loose ends for both cables through here. All right. That'll keep those straight. Hopefully that will do it. We shall see. Let's see if I can get it started here. As you can see, that's right where I'm coming through. And, uh, but I pretty much got the cable pulled through. So I might be able to get some pliers on there and just, uh, you know, get a good grip on it and pull it through. Got the uh, two ends fished through. I'll have to terminate these into uh, MC4 connectors here at some point. Let's go ahead and head back outside and make sure I get this uh, set up in the junction box the way I want it. Now that I got the cable pulled through, I can go ahead and push that in. And then I got that bushing that sits right there. That's going to help protect the cable as it goes through the brick. And I just tuck those in there like that without stressing the cable. Yeah, so that'll work perfectly. So when I do want to use them, I can just pull them down and then these leads should actually sit on either side like that. So this cable is a little bit rigid, but I can latch it down like that. And then these, these tips just stay out like this. And these are waterproof, weatherproof connectors. So I'm not too worried about these, you know, if they're actually attached being uh, left outside the box here, so not a big deal. But when they're not attached, I don't want water getting up in there and corroding the tip at all, so. All right, I'm still waiting on the Z brackets. They should be here sometime today. But one thing I do need to do, since these uh, Z brackets, especially on these 
center three posts here. You can see these little two by fours. They're going to be overlapping since these are all uh, drilled and mounted in the same spot. So what I'm going to have to do is stagger and kind of re-drill a couple of these panels in a, in a couple of spots so that I can apply the Z bracket so that so that they don't interfere with the one next to it, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pre-drill these. That way I'm all ready once those Z brackets arrive later today. All right, I got the uh, Z brackets here, as you can see. Now these are typically designed to be attached kind of like this. And uh, these little stoppers here kind of hold it in, in the right position. And this kind of raises the panel up above the roof so that you have nice airflow. Well, we don't really need that because of the nature of this structure. They have, they're gonna have plenty of airflow. So I'm actually gonna invert this and install it like this so that these will be just uh, mostly recessed after I flip them around and that these these will kind of just lay in there like that. And that'll keep the, uh, the panels from sticking out really all that far. So anyway, let's go ahead and get those on and then see if we can get these things mounted before the sun goes down. All right, I still have to tie down the rest of these panels here, but I just kind of laid them in place. So you can kind of see what I did. This is what I did when I re-drilled these brackets so they wouldn't be stepping on each other's toes there. Although I guess technically I could have laid them on top of each other and these lined, these holes might have actually lined up. Uh, not 100% sure, but my guess is it probably would have been a pain. But this way they are staggered. So I don't have uh, two of the brackets right next to each other or right on top of each other. So yeah, that worked out really well. So let me go ahead and tie down the rest of these and then we are good to go except for the wiring. All right, the finished product. So I got my locking casters down here in the front and wow, those things make it a lot heavier <laughs> once these panels are in the frame. I forget what each panel weighs, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 25, 30 pounds. But uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I like the fact that they're recessed down in there most of the way, that gives it a lower profile. And you can see my height adjustable mechanism here. So this is basically winter height, spring and fall height, and summer height. Of course, the height can also vary during the day if I wanted to. And then uh, I've got easy access to all of the cables here in the back. And you can see I've got the back just resting on the uh, concrete or the ground here, just to give it some extra friction in case the wind is really catching this thing, because it's a lot of surface area. All right, I think that came together really well. I, I really like these, these Bougie RV 200 watt panels and the way that they fit into this kind of a frame and make this a really kind of a, a really nice solution, fairly compact solution for something like emergency backup power and that, that kind of thing. So I'll be really interested to show you the, the kind of the fun stuff that I'm gonna do with this in the videos that are coming. So we're gonna talk about wiring in the next video, uh, series versus parallel. We're gonna show you how we're bringing into the house, all that fun stuff, and then what we're doing in terms of you know, the uh, the solar generator part of it, the, the batteries and the charge controllers and all that stuff. We're going to see how all that comes together with this particular 800 watt system. So stay tuned for that. If you found any of this useful, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. Until then, have fun out there.